right on cue. And we have some virgins. Podcast version that is. Um, we, <laughs> uh, last last episode we had a podcast version. Shout out to Sego, and um, now she's single uh, because you know she said some things and her relationship didn't pan out too well. But it was a great episode. Shout out to Each for throwing up. Classic moment. Classic episode. Shout out to what's she called? I, Auntie and Vegetable. Shout out to Auntie and Vegetable. So shout out to Cheech for the inspiration, or whatever. And today is actually a special day before you even get to a special guest because. Um, the plugs are doing some white shit. They were to drive across the country for like two, three weeks. Hopefully they make it back and I'll end up on some fucking stereotypical horror movie. So now I gotta <laughs> stack up my episodes today. We're recording three episodes in one day. And you know, as you hear the other ones, you see how the fuck they went, whatever. But today we're gonna be more, last week was kind of uh, reckless and aggressive. Today we're on more professional, inspirational, motivational with some kings today. So. Introduce yourself, people. <clears throat> so my name is David Cabello, and I'm Aaron Cabello, and we're the CEO and uh, CEOs of Black and Mobile. Okay, we kings, and they're twins. And the one that spoke first is the older one. <laughs> He's the big brother. Came out how fast? How, how much earlier? One minute. One minute. That's, that's one minute. a lot can change in one minute. That's my baby brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Black and Mobile, tell me, fuck the people, or tell us all more about Black and Mobile, what is it, how it got started, what inspiration, all of this stuff. So yeah, so uh, Black and Mobile, so um, you know, it really just started out as like, just an idea. Um, you know, I dropped out of college. Um, you know, Where I are you dropped, going? I went to Shippensburg. Okay. So we, we both went to Shippensburg, we were roommates. Um, you know, a lot of things happened up there. We experienced a lot of, you know, different things. Uh, I guess you could say experienced racism for the first time, actually experienced it, and you know, just different things. So, you know, mm -hmm. we ended up dropping out for the sole purpose to and help. Just with, how, yeah. I'm just curious, how long were you in there? Uh, we were there for a full year, then we dropped out our third semester, like Got during it. the semester. Um, so yeah, so you know, our, when we dropped out, our whole the whole thing was to help black-owned business in any way. Like that was our purpose. So you know, we dropped out, um, came to a bookstore. You know, I was working there for about two years, um, and then while I was you know making some money on the side, I started working for you know Uber Eats, uh, Postmates, Caviar, and, and, and I was you know just delivering food. I was I was just you know. Fascinated that like you can make you can make money just delivering a bike like come, let's get it So, you know, I'm just you know grinding doing that um, But I actually fell in love with the system like, you know, most people go to work and you know They just go there for a paycheck and like, let me get the hell out of here But I would go there and just like I really like the system. I want to learn more about it So, you know, I would just go home now this mobile type this, this, thing. this mobile thing because you know, like I said my whole thing was how black owned business So, you know as I'm learning the system like like I made like 1100 in less than 40 hours one week. I'm like, what if I could bring this to the community? What if what if, you know, we can have our own our own platform with only black owned business on there. So you know, that's kinda how the idea just started. It was literally just an idea for about at least a year. You know, I got my LLC and all that like last year, but it, that's how it really started. And then um, you know, I met uh Saw from Country Cooking. You know, she uh she let us deliver for it and ever since then I've had like so many businesses, so much attention, you know, just so much. So that's just that's just literally how it started, just for me riding a bike and just learning the system from Uber Eats, loving it, and like, I'm gonna create my own, and I did that. Hmm. And um, so when, and when you met her, was it just like, you literally reached out to like, yo, I think this would be good for you, I'm trying to do this, or was it just happenstance or something? How did that um, connection so happen? We met, so we met, um, we met like, before I actually started delivering for her, we had met some month, like a couple months before that. We went over there, you know, she put a little video, we was massaging, and you know, just a little mm -hmm. fun stuff. Cause we, I was actually trying to deliver then. Um, and we were going to, but then I actually um, got into an uh, accident and I actually uh, playing basketball. I actually um, fractured my foot, sprained my ankle, and then walked for like 50 days. The day after I met her, I actually it was the same day. And I'm like depressed, you know, it was like 50 days when I walked, so I didn't think I was going to start. But after I got back in it and I met and I talked to her again, she put us on, you know, she, every time we come over there, she put us on a video, you know, trying to help us. She said, I really want to help y'all, you're good kids. So I just texted her one day, like, like I was just tired. I'm like, you know, like, I have to start my business. I just texted her one day and said, can we deliver for you? It won't cost you nothing. She said, yes, boo, of course. Ever since then, literally, I was trying to go to business before that, nobody would give me a shot. As soon as she said yes, I started putting on social media that would deliver, now we're getting all this attention. So she, she, she loves to help young people. She always does, and she literally has never asked me for anything. I've never asked her to post me nothing. She just, she just does it because she wants to. Hey, what's up? So yeah. before I come ask more about exactly how the delivery thing works, yeah. But because that's that's fascinating to me because 
because when you asked me, you, you probably heard me through. Not you wasn't you trying. You wasn't being you know presumptuous about it. Yeah. But you was assuming because she has a big platform. A lot of course. people heard about me. You like did yeah. you hear my video country cooking? I was like no, because I just never followed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interested with. But but I always hear like these mixed things about her. Some people are like oh man yeah. she just show off. She reckless. She messy. Yeah. And other people speak so highly and say no she gives back to the community. She's yeah. great. She's helpful. This and that. Whatever. So I think that's a great story to tell yeah. because through all of that, it always like to me. Bottom line, she about making money, and your whole exactly. your whole initial thing was being a black business, helping other black businesses. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, like a personality, you may not like the way she do things, but if she about giving making money herself as a black woman and then helping the community in some way. Like, Listen, eh, I'm gonna be honest. Shit, I like, can see people's perspective on things, you know, but like the personal side of her, the, the personal side of her. You have to be away from business. You have to keep person away from business. On the personal side, she's a great person. Like she, she literally helped me believe in myself as far as my business. So on the personal side, yeah. Now, of course, everyone has their own perspective in business. You can run your business how you want. You know what I mean? She's she speaks her mind. She does whatever she wants. You know, people may say oh, that's unprofessional, or whatever. But look at the following. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about when when she posts me. The this, this, like, it's, it's so. It, yeah. I've always been like. It, it's just yeah. the perspective. Yeah. Some people don't have to run your business that way. Some people do. You know what I mean? But. I don't, you know, I don't go on, you know, criticize anyone else's business. I just really just worry about mine. But I, but I, hundred percent, you know, I can see people's perspective. Yeah, yeah, I can see people's perspective. But that's not what I focus on. I focus on what she's helped me do, rather than focus on the negative stuff. Just focus on, you know, positive stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so, so, so is that how they deliver things? So you asked her, kind of deliver for you, and I know she did deliver. So. Yeah. And what she doing before? I guess she, she was doing she the Uber had, Eats thing. No, no. She actually that's the funny thing. So she already had her own delivery team. She has like a couple of drivers already. Um, you know, she probably thought that's what I wanted to do. Little did she know, no, I have my own <laughs> my own thing where I'm delivering for like twenty businesses. Like I wanted you, you know, she helped me she was one of the first ones. So, you know, first two months I had like three businesses on my website. And she was one of them. Um, but it literally like just literally started out delivering, you know, posting up, you know, we're delivering for country cooking and then it just expanded from there. And, and what was the second question? I'm sorry. You um you asked me you asked me um you know how everything got started. But... It was basically this problem. Oh, you said you know she oh yeah she doesn't do Ubers. That's what it was. Oh she, yeah, she yeah. doesn't do Uber Eats. She had her Postmates own like DoorDash approached her and then, you know you know because we know so we're in the delivery for us so you know we know how to be like aggressive we know how to be laid back so on the aggressive side companies what they do is they just put someone's menu on their website say look order from here and then they go in there and then that's how they get their business done the company doesn't even know or the restaurant doesn't even know they just come in there and try to get it if they if they accept it then that's how they keep doing business but if they don't that's what country cooking did she said no like she had to call the cops on doing that to get them out of it she said i would rather throw my food away than give it to y'all she said i'm only the only way i'll ever let someone deliver from me if it's black owned sure enough here i come and she, you know what I mean? I'm the first black owned food delivery company in the city. She's like, oh, okay. And now I'm the only one that delivers for country cooking. She went out let any other service deliver for her. And y'all do it on bikes? We do it on bikes personally. Yeah. I hire a couple of drivers, you know, what cars. Oh, electric okay. bikes. Electric, electric bikes, bikes, yeah. Oh, electric. So it's really cheating a little bit. <laughs> my bike goes 20 miles per hour, his bike goes 30. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, so it ain't even like better. Why he get, why he get the faster one? Um, he, he wanted that bike. Um, mine's more durable. He's had a lot of problems with that bike, like as far as the tires, you know, glass. So it's two different type of bikes. Mine have like one of the top best, like the best, uh, one of I the best kind of tires. Yeah, it looks like a, like a dirt bike. Almost. His, I ain't gonna lie. His bike, I ain't gonna lie. He'd be like, damn, that's your fast. <laughs> yeah, mine lasts a little longer. It's more durable. It's built, it's built better. But honestly, it's such a good investment, like 2500 piece. And people are like, man, why the hell would you spend that on a bike? But when you're in Center City, you don't gotta find parking, you don't gotta pay for gas, you don't gotta pay for insurance, mm-hmm. you don't have to pay all those little extra fees. You're not tired after riding six hours yeah. in a day. Y'all not tired? No, not tired. on an e-bike. You don't really, you you don't really burn no energy. Right, because it's the, right. Mind you, novice, I know, take my fully card, I've never rode, rode a bike in my whole life. Like a dirt bike, that is, type thing. Oh, uh, I, like, never, I, I, I never, I never rode Yeah, so electric bike, I never did, whatever. You know, I'm just thinking. Ele- electric electric bike, is the wave right now. I'm talking about not yeah, just I'm not bikes, familiar at scooters, all. skateboards, electric cars, and everything's about to be. Yeah. They even got electric freight trucks, where, you know, to go across the country. Sure. Electric now. So, this, man, like, being in the technology, like, I, I always knew I was going to be a business owner, but being into technology, I'm getting to see, like, like Shitty how man, far like, behind? Like, yeah, artificial we're, intelligence. Is yeah, the we're, war. we're pretty we're pretty behind on a lot of things. So if we don't start getting into these fields. The fact that there's no large black-owned yeah. food delivery company. The fact that we're the only one affiliate, and the, and the fact that black-owned businesses don't have a, a service to represent them. We're the first. It just shows you that like we are far behind. We like, we're, we're trying to lead by example. I don't care if ten black-owned food delivery companies did the same thing and started tomorrow. 
just go help black business. Like they need to help. You know what I mean? Now, wait a minute now. He may he may say that. Don't y'all be taking food. No, of course it's, it's enough food. It's enough, <laughs> it's enough for, for everybody everyone, to eat. Whatever. Like, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. I'm not gonna say for that. I hate when people do that. Oh, Philly niggas. No, that's a thing that um capital capitalism condition people to think. No, it ain't enough for everybody. Isn't that like it, it's a we a long way away for it literally not being enough for everybody. Because also I look at the way it's like it could be a million dollar idea in front of everybody at the same given time of like yo if you do these 10 steps you will get a million dollars not everybody gonna do it because it's like it's like everybody don't have to drive the ambition the determination that's, the consistency it's funny you say that it's, yeah. that's literally how it is like like you can put up literally uh-huh. teach someone how to get a success and say look follow this blueprint they'll get to the third step get through a rope most people once they start experiencing any type of failure that's it for them that's it that's it for them you know what I mean so like that's, but that's true 10 steps and most people will not follow those 10 steps my dad he had a great quote cause like my dad he retired shit right super slow <laughs> however he's one of the I call it like the smartest people at life I've ever met yeah. like I'm telling like, it's so funny to me cause you dude, talk my dad like, what are you talking? What word? You just made up that word. What are you talking? You talking slow? You repeating shit? We talking about? But as far as just life shit, life hacks everywhere. You got the gems, the keys, and he said, "I may not be the smartest, so I'm gonna work the hardest and the fastest." So if you tell me to do something, I'm doing shit tomorrow, or like in brightest at dawn type thing, yeah. where someone who may be too smart for their own good, like, oh, I get around, so I wait a few days, whatever. And, um, but the arrogance kind of gets you, get you out your way. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's enough. Uh, yeah, cause I, when I was I was doing Uber for a while, whatever. And then of course, when the Uber East came around, and yeah, so I remember gas was the whole thing. But you got like your bike and a park and yep. all that. Shit. The only bad thing is the weather. Yeah, when it's super hot like this, when it's raining, snow. when it's snow, but we're out there all the time. So that's the only yeah. Because I think you said you, about it. you did say it's been six months all yeah. together now. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, you was doing it in the winter time. Yeah, right? yeah. February, February. Right? February mm-hmm. I started Black History Month. That's my launch. Huh. Yeah, my launch Black History Month. You know. It, 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 it wasn't planned that way. Just like I said, after I got off my injury, I, I'm still limping to this day from the injury. I, I, my ankle's never really healed, but I said, I'm starting no matter what. That's what I said to myself. Like, I'm done waiting. I've been, I've been freaking talking about this for so long. Literally, I had like 800 followers. I was talking about it. I said, I'm starting no matter what. I said it to myself, and I literally haven't stopped since. Like, I haven't stopped since. Another thing I, I talk about a lot of people, you know, we in this generation, everybody's seeing things, everybody's... Uh, inspire and motivate yeah. to do something or whatever but i feel like some people they get caught up it's funny like you know we talk about the steps and the plans but you, at the end of the day you was like that you had an urgency about it. it's like we need to do this right now so i'm gonna do it and you could you probably could have would you say you could have planned out some things more or was everything planned ready to go no I, it was literally no plan <laughs> okay I, I literally, it was, I, I, to this day honestly i really don't really have a plan it's it's, 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 just, it's just coming it's just but it's coming together it's like you'll figure together. this shit okay, out whatever one step in front of other folks once something comes to me i'm gonna figure it out right i feel that's i feel a lot of people get their own way yeah they try to i always say i call it like you try to run before you can crawl yeah. and you so focused on running that you never move though and like you're just trying to sprint out the gate. We're like, no, let, let's at least get some steps. Take let's that. step every single. I, that's what I be telling people. You know, some people ask me. You know, some young people are like, you know, like just for a little bit of advice. Just stay consistent and just do consistent. a little something every day. Like for example, if you have a hundred people to call, and you're like, man, that's so many people. Just call one person a day. Nice. And then by the time you get to the third day, you're like, all right, let me just knock out twenty of these ones. Now I'm comfortable. You know what I mean? So that's just how it works. When you have, when you're, when you're doing something, a rhythm. Businesses and anyone they want to see consistently. Like yes. if you're trying to get investors, they want to not just oh I'm look I got this idea you're all excited. What happens when you fail? What happens when you lose a whole bunch of money? Then what are you gonna do? You gonna keep going? Mm-hmm. So just literally every day just keep going. Yeah. You may not have nothing, but trust me, it's gonna change. And to our credit, we actually do have some type of plan. We have a Kickstarter coming. It's okay. You can't yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yourself now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck going on. I'm just riding this bike. I'm just going. Like. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, like, you know, the plan's coming. I'm just going, out here. But, like, like, to this day, like, it's really been kind of just like me just going. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, me just going. Because I'm the CEO of it. With but pure I ambition and determination. Literally, that's you, it. You, you get along way with plan, those Now the plan's coming together a little bit, but it ain't like I got actual business plan. Like I've never, I don't have a business plan. I really don't. Not on paper. You know, people say, "Oh, you gotta have a business plan." Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't have none of that. Mm-hmm. I literally, everything's in my head, mm-hmm. and I just, and I just execute on it. That's the biggest thing. You can have all these ideas unless you execute on it. It doesn't right. mean anything. Yeah. So I got three now. <laughs> <laughs> One. Um, did you guys see? It? You are you into Gerard Carmichael? Cool. You know that Gerard Carmichael? I know. Not too doesn't matter. He's a filmmaker or whatever. But I watched an interview recently. He was talking about he feels two things. A lot of people have trouble finding or dealing. 
passion and perseverance. Most people don't have a passion. He like they can have all the they may have all the perseverance in the world, but if you don't have a passion, you'll be working hard to a sense of to an end of like no fulfillment. They like you you be the hardest working person ever, you still end up not being happy, fulfilled, or depressed or whatever. They never found that passion to start with. And some people have the passion. They figured out exactly what they want to do, what they should be doing, what they're meant to do, whatever. But if I had a perseverance, it doesn't matter. Because you'll never see through, you'll never finish, you'll never complete the first task to get to the yeah. tenth, uh, tenth task, whatever. I thought that was interesting. Another one, uh, Will Smith had a good quote. When he's talking about laying a brick to your point of like just going, he was I like, um, people would look at like, you know, building a whole house, but long you just focus on that first brick. And lay that brick perfectly every perfectly. single last yeah. time. Eventually, yeah. you have a fucking house back. That's true. Forgot the third one. That's <laughs> <laughs> all good. That's all good. Um, so, since, so, where did this. Cause when I went to college, it's funny you said Shippensburg or whatever, because I, I went to college in Pittsburgh or whatever. Yeah. And it's near there. It's near there. It's kind of. How far is Shippensburg from Philly? Like a couple hours. Like more than three? I was a survivor. Pittsburgh or Shippensburg at least four hours. Man, no. Oh, to Park? Oh, for it. Yeah, it's a lot of things. Like Pittsburgh. I thought it was in the direction there. It's, 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 it's probably cool. direction, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was, it was in the direction. I, th- I, th- I was talking about Harrisburg. I'm sorry. Harrisburg. That's, that's, that's a good way. Definitely. Good way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pittsburgh is like five to six, depending on how you drive away. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. that's fine. I'm talking about Harrisburg. That's fine. But see, I remember going there. I was thinking, like, you know, everybody knows Philly's a state. Fuck the rest of Pennsylvania, whatever. Philly's a state. So, in my mind, I'm thinking. It's Pittsburgh. I've always heard about it, whatever. How much different can it be from Philly, okay. whatever? Yeah. Wrong. Totally different. There's nothing I like. Like, like the way it, the way it operates, the way it moves, the way people act, the way people think. Um, and I felt it definitely was not nothing overt or blatant, but it was some racial undertones about yeah. things or whatever. And I always felt like, damn, like, you know, I wonder how it was I went to Temple. I don't know if it Temple. Temple would have been crazy. But, like, some of the farther off school, like Westchester, Shippensburg, uh, Link, not Link, HBC. You know, shit like that, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting that you say you kind of felt you had similar experiences, maybe even more, and shit was burning up places. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was, I mean, honestly, I, I had a couple experiences, but my brother, he had, he definitely had, like, he, honestly, I wasn't always, like, I don't even like to call it, like, I guess, pro-black anymore. It's really just survival. This is how, like, like black people are in a, a condition where we really need to just it's not even it's a way of thinking that we have to be to get out of uh you know pro- poverty and, and you know everything we're going through but i wasn't always like this i was just like everybody else partying i went to college i was just trying to party talk to all the girls that was it every time you come in with this pro black man get the hell away from me i swear what she said every, get get away from me i don't you're annoying with this like you're weird i was just showing you weird <laughs> i was just showing him and he literally every day was like yo you need to read this you need to read and just show me something and one day i'm like damn bro like like it really almost brought me to chest. I'm like, yo, you're right. Like this is crazy. So okay. I guess Paul's oh, crazy. Yeah. So where did all that old stuff with those feelings or explanations so, come from? Um, I was in geography class. Um, I was really trying to study and learn more about geography. It's something I was passionate about. Um, I'm sitting there listening to this professor teach me things that I've never heard in my life before. I've been to a lot of different high schools. You know, we moved around plenty of different schools, and I just couldn't believe that. I felt I felt like cheated and robbed. Like. Why did I just learn this now? I'm oh, I'm 21 years old and I just learned this now. So that day I left, I just did intensive amount of research on all the stuff I could find, finding books, find just research and everything, telling him because he was my main target. <laughs> what are you doing with your life? I can change <laughs> one soul. <laughs> what, are you what are you doing? And then, and then I went to I went to the National Guard and that experience alone was just. No, you to tell him about it. Tell him about the National Guard. Just in a, so I had a, it was a recruiter uh, named Sergeant Siegel, um, black guy. He got me involved, you know, I went there, uh, like the summer, it was like, I'm not gonna say our summer program, but through the summer I had to go uh, before I went, got shipped to basic training. And I just remember my last day, I had a- uh, Before you went to basic training? Yeah, dis- I decided, you know, I don't wanna- Okay. Yeah, I said, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Feed the damn cat, Zach! I, 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 I already fed the cat. Sick of this fat ass cat. Yeah, so, you know, maybe it's not right for me, I'm rushing, and I had, I had to write a paper about this long why I wanted to leave. All I know is that he came in there with the paper, he slammed something that said, this Black Lives Matter shit is fucking stupid, you're dummy worthless, you're never going to be anything, you're going to end up just like the rest of them. He just went on this rant of how it was just so worthless and all this stuff and how 
It was just. Oh, that's your brother or the, the, the sergeant? Oh, okay. Sergeant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say that. I was just like, oh, like, yeah, you really was trying to party, party. I had enough. No, 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 that's how a lot of them. And he was a black dude too. No, this is the this. I don't know. This was the other. This was the. Um, that was the, uh, yeah, the white the white guy who said yeah. this. But uh, he was from our hometown actually too, from Bristol. So we actually you know we would talk a lot like like just soldiers like mm-hmm. fellow soldiers at first, but then I just got real. I went left and I left. They were spitting at him while he was out yeah, there. Was, and all, like just like that. Just so, just, just, so, yeah, yeah, and uh, so. white, you know. But this was before. So during that last day, you just didn't go, or you I just, actually did. I did. I did not get shipped off at um. I think. Two days later, I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go to Missouri or something like that, but I have. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't okay. right. But even since then, like we've just been constant researching and watching documentaries, just learning more about ourselves. And then recently, what was it, May? I think yeah, we found yeah. out we actually, you know, we've been doing a lot of like our research about our DNA, our ancestors. And we found that we're related to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So that was like. Like, whoa, and like we, were, we were just doing this naturally. Like, we didn't know who we related to. We didn't know. We knew there was something significant. Yeah. He always would say that. I, I swear, like a week before he said, there's somebody important in our in our, in our our history, like our family history. And then we found out, we're like, wow. Like, so that so was kind of And we've just been doing this naturally. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just what we do every day. But what, that's really what we expect. That's really the whole change. Like I said, like, you know, you, you said he changed one soul. Literally, he changed one soul and look what it turned into. Cause he changed me. He knew he couldn't do it without me. So that's the same thing in business. I know I can't do it without him. So you know we've always been that way. We lived the, literally with college door, uh, roommates and all that stuff. So we just kind of do everything together. But I would not be this way if it wasn't for him opening my mind to it. You know. So ever since he opened my mind, it's just kind of been like I've always been in the business. Like I said, I've always knew I was gonna be an entrepreneur. I always knew I was gonna have my own business. I just did not know I was gonna be doing this. Change your lens. Though. Yeah, I, I ch- literally <laughs> well, three six. When we, like, when we, me, uh, one we got to the <laughs> bookstore, like we. We saved it from closing after 15 years. He was about to close. We saved the bookstore from closing, and I had, you know, I had a son. I have a son now. Um, I have having a son at that time. I had left, you know, took my little break, but Davis stuck it out, and he built his website, the app. He always updated his systems to update. He learned everything just by just by learning by himself, just making sure that that business stayed afloat. So making sure his business was afloat got him all the expertise that he has. Literally, that's that's what I, and that's what I want to you know. That's really a message to like anyone that's working a job or just young people. If you're gonna, you go, everyone's got to work for someone eventually. If you're working for someone, learn as much as you can from them because because obviously they're in a position to pay you, so they have a position of power. Learn whatever you can from them so that way when you leave. You can always you can put that to you know something mm-hmm. that you want to do you know what I mean so that's what I always try to do every time I'm working for someone no matter who it is no matter how little the task I want to learn as much as possible mm-hmm. so I can do it to myself and do you guys are you like totally uh, complete entrepreneur entrepreneur at this point or you still have other jobs to kind of funnel we, the we still do we still Uber stuff. Eats and stuff like that on the side yeah, um, you know like yeah I've had I've had like a W two job in over two years but like you know independent contractor job. Mm-hmm. It's still good to work for them and learn it. You know what I mean? Like you know, work, see what updates they got because they're always updating something. So you know, that's kind of what I do. I just kind of work for them on the side. Um, but we're, we're just waiting for our business to be nationwide. And yeah, at this point. Once we get to the level where we don't need them, that's it. Of course, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna take advantage. Of but it's always good to learn. You know, it's always good to learn from them. But right now, I'm in a I'm in a space where it's like it's a, a transition right now, where it's like my business is getting more known. So as we get more business, we got a whole new platform. My whole thing is really to take a step back because I'm delivering. I don't want to deliver more. Take a step back, let someone else do that, and then just kind of you know. Think about that, actual Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, like managing, be a real CEO, go to other cities because that's where the real money is trying to get sales. Now. We're at the yeah. point where we have to learn how to generate sales just at all times. Just keep the sales going. We exactly. can get traffic and Instagram followings and all that is different from buying our. St- Supporting our service, yeah, so yeah, once yeah. we, we got to get that system. That's how you know you guys are actual businessmen and not like. Well, no, no, not to anybody, but I feel that's an important point to make. Like, uh, clicks and interactions don't necessarily equal to fucking sales and. People really think you're winning. This is just about followers. Like, we got sixteen thousand followers. I started literally with like I said, eight hundred. Every time someone would shot me out between Wallow, Hundred Cooking. I think I got like 3,000 followers one time and one day. I'm like, I'm like, damn. But people think you're winning. People think, oh, they're successful. What's the Do you want to look at my wallet? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, like, that wasn't 3,000 sales. Yeah, like, that wasn't 1,000 dollars in sales. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not like it's all profit. You didn't be, you know, do any of these numbers. You know what I mean? We're getting a percentage. You know what I mean? So, you know, just, just for everyone that's like, you know, just like, you know, listening right now, literally followers is not equal money. 
Like, it's going to take a long time in business to get to that point. Consistency. Like, some people really saw it. She didn't just, you know, she didn't just start making a whole bunch of money. And, it, like, that's how it works. You start mm-hmm. from somewhere, but followers do not equal money at all. And um, I, I heard another quote before. I think it was from Issa Rae, actually. And she was stressing the importance. Because you feel like, you know, again, we in this this digital age where we're seeing so much shit, whatever, mm-hmm. seeing so much inspiration, so much comparison. Some people are feeling like, oh, like, can you help me? Can you bring me? Can you pull me up? Whatever. She said a lot, of, especially young people, you should do more of, like, uh, networking horizontally instead of vertically, whatever. Um, did that ever... So with your uh, emphasis on, like, helping black business, was that also ever thought of, like... Um, or was it always just like a enclosed thing? Like, no, maybe we can like see who else. Well, you like, I guess it is. The answer is there was no other business out there, so it wasn't like you can even reach out and help other people. Like, what do you mean? Our, our, our options, like, we always knew we wanted to just support black businesses. That was like just only help them. Mm-hmm. Once we get that system, you know, that all taken care of, we'll go out to other ethnic groups. You know, what? We'll, we'll no, like, that's not the question we're asking, right? No, it was just just think. I just thought it was an interesting point of like, cause I, I like like I said, I was telling you off my before the show like initially when i was like doing my like film uh pursuits and aspirations i was like oh like send out these people send out to this casting director or director shit like that whatever and i felt like it was a i was reaching where i was like extending my hand upward and then once i, I felt when i did the podcast it was more of a horizontal thing I'm like no let's let's help each other we're on each other's level let's grow together I get instead of feeling like i had to be pulled up so i was i was asking you oh, was that ever a thought from then or even now i'm just thinking like and you said you care so much about helping black business, so do you feel like you look around your peers or the landscape and be like, okay, like, see other I, people? I, I felt like in the like beginning. Because you guys like, are young, you are building right now. Yeah, I felt like in the beginning, it was definitely like reaching, just trying to, you know, all right, like, let's try to get this. Now, I'm more about just uh, trying to work with who wants to work with me. Every okay. black owned business is not going to want to work with me. I've had people who want to get, who took a while to get signed up and just got off the next week. You know, I've had, <laughs> I've had all of that. So now I just focus on who wants to work with me and try to just do the best business as possible with those people. Because in the black community, word gets around fast. You mess up with somebody, it's, it's, hmm. you know what I mean? They're going to tell somebody, you know, the world's going to get around. So I just try to do business, the best business I can with the people I know. Okay, so speaking of that, what's your thoughts on that? Because that's a uh, ever hot topic of like, oh, black business, people don't have to be professional, people don't have to do this, whatever, this and that. So your experience with, on the other end and now people, now running a business, is that a thing that back in your mind saying like, yo, like, I, we want to be the cream of the crop or like, or I feel like we're working with like our back against the wall. People always want to try to like prejudge us or be Man. harder on us because we are black. I feel that is a part of the uh, the thing of like this self hate, self hate thing that black people have. Where like I feel sometimes we are harder on each other than other people. Whatever we def we definitely yeah. are. Like I, I I feel like you know since because you know but then some people are just fucked up in business though. Like like yeah, you have a great true. product and great talent, great skill, but you're just terrible. That's true. And, and that's and that's true. <laughs> like I mean I I also, I, I feel like um you know. The first thing is, no matter what, we have to still support black owned business because when these other corporations make mistakes and all that stuff, they'll mm-hmm. take your money, do whatever, we'll still go back and support them. Uh, even, with, even with racial stuff, they do racial things and we'll still go back and support them. But if you get an attitude from an employee who's not even the owner at the... At the yeah, company, yeah, 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 yeah. I never sense. got that. Yeah, it's an employee, so they just have the wrong employee there. So we still have to support. But there are some, you know, there are some business where it's like, you know, you know, I won't, you know, Sometimes you know you don't want to go out and support them, and I get that. But at the end of the day, my my platform is is really to just bring everyone together. So I can't you know at the end of the day we have to keep supporting. Like that's all I can say about that. Like there's there's good and bad in every everybody's business, but we have to keep supporting our own. And it can't change unless we to keep supporting. Exactly. Because exactly. if you stop supporting, shit fizzles off. You can be mad that there's no black businesses. But but I mean we 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 do have it hard. Like we 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 really do have it the hardest because like. You know, not only do a lot of our businesses don't get, we don't get the funding, the capital. Um, you know, it's just, I like to say three challenges like for my business. The first one what, like that I've experienced is the first one is getting business owners to trust me and my service. So we have no trust when it comes, you know, working with each other. Like, there's not too much trust in there because, you know, a lot of business owners are like, even people, oh, that's a scam, that's not real. Like, what is he just hustling? Yeah, his, his new level. Yeah, yeah what, what is this? Because like, they never, they've never seen something like that. And, the, you know, a second challenge is, um, like getting black people to support black owned business like this is it's a trend right now but don't that don't make people are supporting us I, I, like, it's cool to say it's very cool to say it's very cool to say oh we support black owned business but that don't mean y'all supporting black owned business every day that don't mean I look for a black owned business to try to support every day because you know that's my company but 
it's just it's really just a trend, but I'm trying to make it to where it could be every day. Oh, there's, no, right. there's no there's no excuses. We'll bring it right to your door. But that's another challenge, just getting black people to support black owned businesses. Integration shows you what black people think about black businesses. We chose other to support other people's businesses rather than our own communities and we lost pretty much like, all of our wealth okay. that we've accumulated through those rough Three times. Like, we we built up so much wealth from teams to um, entertainment all across the board and then we chose to give that all up. That yeah. shows you the it's, mindset. Of it. That's an interesting take that's been bubbling the past few years of like, yo, integration, the worst thing we're having to black people. Mm-hmm. Are you that? Are you rolling with that? I'm, not, I'm gonna say I'm not I, gonna say it's I, the I, worst. I, I'm not gonna say it's I'm the worst it. thing. I'm gonna I'm definitely it. say it was a, a mistake. It was not double edged sword. It was maybe. not well thought out. Okay. I mean, we, to, to think about that, like we had we had our own systems. We, mm-hmm. So I, I was reading Claude Anderson. We have one of the greatest achievements out of any race, any, any other group. We reduced our, liter, our literacy rate by fifty percent after getting out of slavery. No other group has ever done that. Mm-hmm. We built. We, we had, we owned land, bunches of business. We had people, um, other nations that want to do business with us, like Tulsa and stuff like that. Until they brought it down. Obviously, well, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Besides the race, race riots. But it was there. They, even they even the baseball built. teams, before Jackie Robinson integrated, all the stuff that we owned and controlled, we lost control of that, like the hair care company. We lost all control of our wealth and power because we chose to go work for other people's businesses. So integrate to the school system and so I'm I'm with it. I think I think you know nothing against Martin Luther King. He was a genuine person, but even he said I, even, he, I'm learning that he wasn't he was about that, but then he later changed. That's what I'm saying. He, he said, said he said to a burning house. I, I feel I've integrated my people into a burning house, and, mm-hmm. and that's the truth. Like like integration, I'm on I'm on that side. Whereas like it was really kind of like it was just a mistake. Simple as that. There's no other way around it. I get that he was genuine about it. He was really just he was really trying to make change. So I don't, I, you know, like, oh, like he was. Anybody can make a mistake. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of our, you know, that's what we have to. As young people, we have to correct the mistakes of our ancestors and our, you know, our elders and stuff like that. So that's one of the mistakes. He did a lot of good, but integration was just it probably wasn't the best for us. Okay. Because. So how about this? So do you think? So you know, of course, all the powers that be at the time that made these things happen slowly but surely by the integration system. Do you feel it was an ultimate plan to? Um, dilute and fizzle out all the things that were gained by black people or was it just the double edged sword of like alright we've been fucking them over and kicking them to the wayside less oh, okay, okay. <laughs> nah. there's always been an agenda yeah, there's, there's always an agenda there's there's every agenda there. today there's always been an agenda <laughs> that has not changed N- not at all that has not I mean cause like at the end of the day we, we weren't in it, we weren't integrated with them and they st- uh, we still were we still were you know they still were the dominant class. You know, we're over, black people, we're only like 12%, you know what I mean? They're like, we have a huge population here, but mm-hmm. everything's an agenda to, to dilute our power. They do not want to see us rise. That's, that, that's just what they The topic today mm-hmm. that's going on, people talk about reparations. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that say it's never going to happen. There's people that it should happen, you know, write the check. Giving black people reparations is the absolute demise of white supremacy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. Like, if they do that, that's literally getting rid of the entire system that they took mm-hmm. hundreds of years to build and maintain. It just, it just doesn't make sense. And that's one thing I don't like sometimes like, oh, I feel like black people get a little too hard on themselves. I feel like, yo, we went through all of this shit over centuries and we're still, of course, we're not in an amazing spot right now, but we're still at where we're at right now, whatever. It's thriving, still the most powerful influential culture in the world, whatever. So at least give us another, like give ourselves 400 years of catch up time type thing, whatever. Tops, of course, of course, we want shit happening tomorrow. But yeah. I feel like you can't feel like, oh my God, black, we're never gonna be real. We're always gonna be had this self hate against us. We're gonna be anti each other. We're never gonna support each other. I'm like, no, like, we we gonna do a lot. <laughs> like, like, like we still, we still, I mean, we still walk around with trauma. I feel like everyone. Fact, the trauma tra- still still trauma, very trauma. present. I feel like, for example, current you, present, if, current trauma still happening. Yeah, if you go through trauma the first 18 years of your life. It's not gonna heal in two years. It's gonna take at least eighteen years to heal. So, you know, it, we're still walking around trying. But on your point, we do influence everything. You know, like all over the world. Like, I feel like Black Americans are like one of the richest. You know, uh, a group of Black people in the world. You know, there's you know parts of Africa, but like uh-huh. we influence a lot in America. You know what I mean? So we need they. We need them. They need us. And then the day we all just have to learn to work together. It's just hard. We just have to learn to work together. So that's what we try to do with Black Movement. Show that Black people can work together. Excellent. Literally, just we can work together. As simple as that. No, everything ain't gonna be perfect, but we can work together. 
Uh, that got uh, that got something interesting as far as you said it over the gender brings down stuff like that. That's always find interesting about like racist whites, cause it's like I feel everybody's racist, and I don't feel necessarily racist in this bad. Cause if you feel you're a superior race, I don't necessarily have a bad thing, whatever. That's your that's your thing, whatever. Well, before, so before you go into you know superior race, I feel like. I feel like we have the definition of racism just wrong. Because okay, because the, the definition is just spirit, but you feel I feel like racism is really just it's just if you if you if you break it down like it, race and ism, so they just added an ism on it. So yeah. really, a race is a competition. So so technically, you could you could call me a racist. I'm in a race right. to make sure black people are at top, make sure they have you know opportunities. Same thing with white. So I don't mind the whole you know racist thing. It's really when like. But we don't have we have no power to really change anything from any other culture. Like we can't make a move on right a now grand scale, on a sure. grand scale that can sure. affect the prison system. Yeah. That's the perfect example of why of, of what racism really is. Like, <clears throat> that right there. I, I always have this every time I think about it, every time, every time I think of a prison, I think of the art museum in Philadelphia and right across the street from it is a fucking prison. What the fuck? Why is a, a, a museum celebrating us? Right across from a goddamn prison, knowing that most of our people are in there. So it's just, you know what I mean? Shit, and stuff like that. It's just, but that's why we, uh, a lot of our leaders are in there. A lot of work behind as a race because mm-hmm. they have the ability to do that at any at any time. For sure. And I, and I was just saying, that I feel that, like you said, a race. If everybody literally just in a race to be number one or top, that could be a civil race. Like you know, when people in the Olympics and people are running. Whoever win, wins, wins, like, win, whatever. Could. But once you start trying to knock people's legs out and constantly keep them down, no, constantly cut, no, drip, cut their legs yeah, off, shit like that. Off, cut and their I, arms and off. And I, 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 because we, I have a conversation with someone, and um, I was like, you know, let's say the racist whites are so crazy, whatever, right? Shit like that. And he like, no, we can't figure out the Asians, though. Like, a lot of Asians if, are just as, if not as racist. It's or not just more a black white thing, though. Of, of course. It's not a black But I, I told him, I feel the key difference in, like, a truly, like, super racist white person and, like, a racist Asian person. For the most part, Asians be chilling. Like, they just mind their own bitch, trying to build their shit, whatever, this and that. They won't even talk to you. Yeah, but exactly. You don't exist. I don't, we build in Chinatown again over here. But white person, they just came and stand a truly, a truly racist one. Yeah. Your existence just... Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel that's why they are just so fucking. That's what true. That's what Like stuff I've read and researched, it's it's really deep to the thinking behind that. I don't know how much I really want to get into it because how it's, it's deep of just the mindset of that. But if you think about the Asian community, like they stick together at all costs. That's why mm-hmm. they are where they are, from wealth to ownership. That's what they they don't vote. There's no need for them. <laughs> all they give a fuck about is. Securing, owning, all of that—that's all they care about. Look, mm-hmm. they have their own, their own town in almost every city. Mm-hmm. And and, I, and and that's a good point as far as you know another community because like I said, it's really it's bigger than just black and white now. There's other communities, you know, other people are thriving. So in the Asian community, when people because again, a lot of black people tell me I'm racist. I get more pe- black people to tell me I'm racist than any other race. Mm-hmm. More black people. In fact, my men- someone who was my mentor said, "No, you're hateful. That's racist and all that stuff." <laughs> you're hateful. Yes, hateful. <laughs> I deliver food. I've said anything on my post about killing nobody, about hating nobody. I just deliver food on a bed. I'm not racist, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not hateful, but you know what I mean? Right, Whatever right, you want right, to say. Right. But um, in the Asian community, they have delivery services, and they only deliver for Asian businesses. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? So, and they only hire mostly Asian people from the community. So, but when a black man does that, when a black man tries to be successful, and then you know, it's open about it, you know, then you get all the you know the backlash. But I get more backlash from my own people. Condition. Yes, yeah, it's con- literally condition. I get it from my, my own people more than any anybody else. Um, have you guys heard? Have you guys heard about the ASAP Rocky thing? <laughs> yeah. <I have. laughs> okay, I find it a very interesting situation because I'm sure you guys, you know, you guys are well versed. I'm sure you've seen a, or heard about the thing he said about Ferguson years ago. I did, I did. So now, if you bring it up now, he's going to do the situation in Sweden. I feel two things can be true, you know, as all as on most things on the internet, whatever people fail to acknowledge the nuance of things, whatever. Like he can be a very much so ignorant ass nigga, whatever, borderline Uncle Tom nigga, very possibly whatever. And he could always be going through some injustice thing, whatever, that someone can feel the right, has the right to feel like, yo, I want to do something about that, whatever. But what I don't like is especially people that's in power, rich people, famous people, entertainers, whatever, when they feel like 
people that were especially especially when he said it when Ferguson shit was very fresh in the zeitgeist of like our community. I'm gonna say it at the time. I feel people have the right to be like, fuck that nigga. I don't care whatever. Like, like, like fuck that nigga. I'm from Philly. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in Sweden or whatever, but I'm in Philly, and I'm only worried about that. Like honestly, like like I, it's not cool because you know I made a post about it. I put it on my story, and someone you know that's uh, he said like you hateful. He said delete that. He said yo like you know I look up to you like you know what I mean you're so much better than that like you have a really a good message like and you know we don't want to talk about black men getting arrested and all that. So I seen this point I'm like you know what man I'm gonna just delete it. I deleted it. I deleted it, but. That's truly how I feel. Honestly, for someone to make a so for someone who could reach that many people and make a statement like that, like literally make it like that is disrespectful. How who he is for him to say that? I, I, what is what is that's that showing young people should not get always says hold your own nuts. Yeah, that's your problem now. You were out there, you running your mouth stupid, and then you got he, arrested he, in Sweden. He, he, he's showing problem. other people, like young people that listen to his music, to not give a fuck about racial problems. That's literally what he's saying in that message. And especially because it was such a long winded. Not give up. He could have been like, yo, yeah. like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. Talk about this. He was like, man, I'm fucking bitches. I'm doing drugs. So whole fashion bitches. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah. Whole, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, whole clip. I'm not giving a fuck. He, he couldn't wait for somebody to ask him some shit. Mm. And I remember someone. I met a post that said, well, you know, you were trying to impress. Uh, you were trying to impress the Europeans. So now they locked you up. So now what? Mm-hmm. So it's something like that. Where like you was the same people. He you always tell me, I'm in Europe here. I'm in London. Yeah, he always yeah. bragging on being over here. Go to Africa. Now you did. You really did. You know what I mean? But it's just, I again, I don't want to see. We're already in prison. I don't want to see a black man in prison, but the ancestors work are in a, in oh, a, in a very, yeah. <laughs> the ancestors, they have a powerful way of, you know, sending a message. So that's his problem. And, and literally, I would probably, even if I meet him, he has nothing to really do to affect me. So that's his issue. But mm-hmm. my, my answer to that is, I'm a Philly. <laughs> right. I'm yeah. a Philly. <laughs> I truly don't give a fuck whatever, but I personally, like, that's fucked up whatever. But I don't give a fuck though. So they I'm like, not signing no petition. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can carry that by petition. I'm sure you'll be all right. Like, <laughs> never, never mind. Music people yeah, are like, only doing that. are way for way worse situations. Music right people now. are only doing that because he's in the music. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They're only, that's the only reason. And that's why it's so like kind of irking to me because y'all are trying to put it on the consumer's back and the or the, or the, the common man's yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. when the common man's when I was truly uh um affected and um offended. But I want to see. Well, I want to see one person. Repost what he said. Mm-hmm. Y'all want to repost his petition? Repost what he said, mm-hmm. and then say, "Look, he made a mistake." I want to see ASAP Rocky post. He said, "I made a mistake." I need just okay, yeah. Now we support you, but mm-hmm. now you want the black support. Now you want support from the black community when you clearly just got like fuck the black community. Like mm-hmm. I'm all the way in uh, California, wherever, and I don't care about Ferguson. I don't care about these black kids dying. That's the message you're sending off to the other young black kids. Keep killing each other. Fuck it. Keep doing your thing. Fuck these bitches. Whatever. That's not cool at all. So mm-hmm. really, I could care less about the whole situation, but I'm not gonna talk bad about it. But of course, of course, I care less. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, like, um, you guys speak a lot about you know growth and you know building. So a question, a general question is like, um, I don't have a conversation with someone. So it, it was stemming from the whole WNBA debate, whatever. People saying, "Let's get paid more." I'm not into that shit, bro. Mm-hmm. But I was my counterpoint was like, "Yo, I have no sympathy for someone doing what they supposedly love and getting paid like more than fifty grand." Okay, they're not getting paid 125 million like Mike Conley bum ass, but they're getting paid 50 grand for some, for like four months of work, and you love playing ball. So like, okay, and y'all don't make that much fucking money, so I don't get the whole debate here or whatever. And he was like, well, that's 50 grand not a lot. I'm like, yo, if I'm getting paid 50 grand to literally do nothing else but what I love, I don't think no one should give me some sympathy, because I'll figure out the rest of whatever, try to make that bill, double up stat, whatever, but like, I'm getting paid 50 grand for true passion, whatever. People who don't get paid, I mean, there's plenty of people working their whole life and never get made, and never make one dollar off their true passion, whatever. So I have no sympathy for that. So, I bring it to you guys, what is, like, you know, cause you, like I so said, you talk so much about growth, what is, like, your glass ceiling, where, like, you think you will find some sense of, like, content or comfort, like, where you would like to grow, whatever, and is there some, uh, like, a certain minimum that you're like, all right, you know, like, long as I get there, the rest can figure itself out, figure itself out with it. Um, so, Kinda. there's no, there's, my motivation is not money. It's not like I'm looking to make a certain amount of money or acquire, acquire a certain amount of money. It's really about how many, how many people I can help. Okay. When I get to a certain point where I, I feel like I'm helping enough people, um, you know, if someone wants to buy my company, who, who's going to be black, you know, finish the mission out, that's cool, but I don't feel like it's like, let me try to make a million dollars. Okay. Money. Quick, quick question, counter. Yeah. So let's say, somehow, Hypothetical. Somehow you can measure this by next week that you help so many black people. Let's say a hundred black people in five years. In the five years, you help thousands of black people across yeah. the country. At this point, or whatever. 
but you still make exactly the same amount of money you have right now. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that without money. There's no way I'm gonna be able to be able to somehow. But no, no. I mean, continue with your book. I'm joking. I mean, yeah, like, like, I, I, I guess as long as as long as I can, like, you know, really have a place to stay, you know, food, you know, as long as I can make mm-hmm. an honest wage off it, yeah. But I mean, that's I mean, I'm a business. So I mean, yeah, I make some money, but I'm saying that's not the the sole purpose. Of course, of course. Sole thing is to really create employment opportunities, keep young kids off the street, mm-hmm. help black owned business. But of course, I'm making some money doing that. You know what I mean? It's not wrong with making money. I, don't know. I mean, we, we should not, Yeah, yeah, we should not associate money with like, oh, would you do this for free? Hell no, I'm not going to get on a bike and deliver food for free. I don't know what the hell wrong with you. I am not doing that. People really think that. when they, um, You know, we got something wrong with our site. And so I thought the delivery was free. Do you really think I'm about to get on my bike and come to your house for free? <laughs> you you, you got to be tripping right now. You know what I mean? So, of course, nothing's free, but that's not that's not the main. The main thing is to really help as many people as possible. You know, I got so many no. other ideas, um, you know, that I'm going to, you know, use when I get the money, you know, to fund these other ideas and do more things. Because, like, it ain't just about... You know, black and mobile. Let's just get this everywhere. Like that's that's the thing. But I'm gonna do so pad. so much more. You know what I mean? Just for the community helping because we really need the help. And as long as we keep waiting on reparations, <laughs> we're never gonna get anywhere. So I just want to you know just do something. You know what I mean? Um, well, from the beginning question, like you said, a place of contentment. I'm not gonna relate this to any like black and mobile. I'm talking about from my personal self. Mm-hmm. Like I was watching this. A YouTube video called uh, Doomsday Preppers, which is how they prepare for like how they prepare for war and how they get their like their military. That's that's how I see my contentment, like being able to defend my family and protect them, no matter what comes, no matter what force or all this, no matter what, they good for just for, for years to come, even if I'm not there, they good. That's how that's my thinking. About that. Speaking about selling, um, once time I watched, I listened to an interview with Bob Johnson. And it was very fascinating because I never actually heard him speak in all these years of knowing BET or whatever. And he was talking about his whole history of how he came about or whatever and how he felt he wasn't truly appreciated or um, respected for what he did for BET up until he sold it. And then people were like, oh, we hate you, fucking sell you a coon or whatever. And he like, I was doing all this shit for black people, empowerment, and you know representation all these decades. And then you think that because I'm a black businessman, I can't act like a businessman or whatever. And he's like, he's just talking about basically how black they have so much to deal with and balance on our shoulders as far as like representation for our whole race or every decision we make or whatever. So, and he, so, but at the same time, yeah, yeah, when I got a certain deal, I feel I, I feel we hit our plateau or whatever. I sold it to the, to the highest bidder or whatever. So, but you at the same time just talking about feel, it, feel that it would be an um, emphasis on selling to a black person no matter what. Yeah, I would, I would want to sell it to a black person just to make sure that agenda is sorted out, you know, the proper way. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like the only person that's going to be able to relate to what I'm doing is another black person. So, and then they have rather to sell it there. There's no need for a white person trying to buy my company. Um, they have enough delivery services. Uh-huh. There's at least fifteen to twenty. Uh, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm not gonna say all white owned because you know Asian owned, but just you know from other non-black. Uh, yeah, non-black. So, you know. Maybe I won't sell it, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll just pass it down, you know what I mean? But if I were to sell it, it definitely would have to be to so, you know, you know, a person of, you know, African descent. I think that's such an interesting conundrum because it's like, yeah, because only, only a black person, not only, but, you know, black people do have to deal with it constantly with, like, damn, every decision, I can either push my race forward or set us back another 100 years type, yeah. like, urgency, whatever. And he, and I mean, he sold BT for, like, a billion dollars and shit like that, whatever. Yeah. Anybody else, you're like, yo, that's, been a, that's a great business, though. Now, people are like, oh, now, black person don't run BT more than down, whoever since, whatever. I'm sorry, who did he sell it to? Um, Viacom, or, like, like, not black. No, no, not, not black. Not that's, I mean, that's what people, that's I guess, are complaining about, but it's his decision, it's his company, mm-hmm. he built it, mm-hmm. it's his decision. But. I mean, but I, I mean, I can't say it, man, like, he has a good point when he says, like, when I was doing it, no one really appreciated me. That's a very good point because I feel like, I feel like when, when, when you're, when you're doing it, people just expect you to start doing it now. Like they just like, oh, like no, that's that guy who's doing that black power stuff. Like they just expect you to do that. No, like this, we have to pay the bills as well. Uh-huh. So if y'all not appreciating it, if y'all not you know supporting, y'all not showing up, and you know what I mean, it gets a little frustrating. Like I've only been doing this for four months. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I can see like this is frustrating. Like uh-huh. y'all. Because people just go about there every day. That's it. They do the normal stuff. So I can see his perspective, but... Anything with a true pursuit. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Like, it's like self-doubt, passion, uh, odds, fucking speed bumps. I'm sure it has setbacks or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not for real. We have got a... 
that's the thing. You're gonna you're gonna have setbacks in business or, or just in life. So either you're gonna be one, you got to live anyway. You know what I mean? So just find a way to get through it. Don't be miserable. You know what I mean? Just find a way to get through it. You're gonna be hurt, go through trauma, but you literally just gotta find a way to do it. There's no other choice. First of all, yeah. All right, now we go do some like speed round questions. Yeah. Keep you on your toes, your head. Um. Interesting, you guys are twins. In what ways are you the same as your childhood self? Um, I feel like I'm still like um, just very creative and maybe just adventurous. You know what I mean? I'm always, I'm just curious. I'm always just, I've always been the type to not really like close my mouth. Even as a young child, I'm never like I'm gonna speak how I feel. So I feel like this just makes sense of what I'm doing. I just, I just speak how I feel. Me, I mean. Can't even give you the answer. How my childhood so he's just still quiet and reserved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's always been the quiet one. Of I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm always on a search to just like, just find my true passion, my true purpose, and like my complete self. Like, that's I hope I just want to do that. Like even as a t- like childhood, just be my complete self. Like, just keep, peace in a sense. keep striving for that. Just keep going. For that. Cool. Um, would you rather lose all your old memories? Here, here, here we go, Gage. One, I got, I got. <laughs> and sad. Here we go. Would you rather lose all your old memories and never be able to make new ones or keep the old ones and never be able to oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Come on. lose all your old memories and only make new ones or never be able to make new ones and keep your old memories? I'd rather lose yeah. all the old ones. And only make new ones out there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And Grant, of course, with the question, you, you still know people are always on memory shit that happened. Yeah, I gotta lose all the old memories and okay. just okay. start fresh over here. Yeah, yeah fuck everybody. Cool. <laughs> um, would you rather discover something great and share or discover something evil and prevent it? Ask that question again. Would great you rather and share, evil prevent it? Great and share it or evil and prevent it? Discover. Which would you rather discover? I'd rather prevent. I'd rather prevent. I don't know, I'm a little confused by the question. I don't know. Would you rather? <laughs> Give him the brother talk, man. Come on, yes, break it down. I'm a little confused. Hold on. You find something great, you want to <laughs> share it to the world. Yeah. You, you figure out something evil, you want to stop it before it happens. Uh, I'm the type definitely to find something great and share it. Okay. Yeah. Definitely want to find something great and share it. Um, who do you consider the most important person in your life, and how, you, how do you think you can improve the relationship with that person? I mean, honestly, I'm sit- it's cliche. I'm sitting right next to him. We do everything together. I just feel like... Um, we have to become on one accord more. Like I have a, I have a disrespectful mouth, so I, like, oh, okay. I, I have anger problems. So when I get angry, I just start talking, whatever. But I feel like just trying to connect. You definitely with curious him more. before the mics came on. Yeah, I was yeah, like, sir. <laughs> like, whoa, I'm just wanting some food. Yeah, like, connect with him on a on a different level. I definitely say he's the, obviously the most important, you know, person in my life. We came out the womb together. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll first place. Get, I am first place. So I'll never get closer to anyone than him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Like. That's my twin brother. I do have a son now, though. Right. Yeah. So, like, Sorry, I let you know. This like, it's, now you're second place. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 he's he's just part of the trio. So like, that's that's what it is. Like. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, would you be willing to sacrifice your finger to have immunity of all diseases forever? Yes. For ten years. I'm still good. Yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you had to choose free unlimited service for five years from one of these services, chauffeur, cook, masseuse, housekeeper, personal secretary, what would you choose? You gotta repeat them. Gotcha. Uh, that's not... Chauffeur, no. cook, masseuse, housekeeper, personal secretary. Probably, probably, it's, it's hard as a masseuse and a cook. Yeah, I'll probably go with the cook. I'll probably go with the cook because I love to eat. Um, yeah, I probably don't. Can y'all cook, fellas? I don't cook that much. I'm always delivering, ordering out from you know. I feel like I've like um, the mother of my child, uh, my child's mother. She's a very good cook. She's a chef. Okay, I picked up some things, you know. So okay. I feel well, like I'm but my dad cook. was a chef. His dad was a chef. My mom loves to cook. Like we come from, you know, family. They just love to cook. So I, I, I like to cook. I just don't ever get a chance to because I mean I'm always busy. But I, when I settle down, I definitely will. Can't cook anything. <laughs> Not one thing at all. So <laughs> you got better than me. Um, if you had to move to a new country at short notice, which country would it be? Yeah. Congo. Congo for sure. Congo. Yeah, for sure. I, I would say I, somewhere Congo, somewhere in West Africa, but Congo. Okay. Yeah. Egypt is the main place I want to go to for yeah, um, <laughs> What characteristic do you admire most in others? Um, it's gonna sound weird, but trauma. I 
I look, I look for the, I look for, I look for what they went through. I love to ask somebody, even when I'm meeting a new girl, like, you know, tell me what you went through. What's the hardest thing? You know, something like that. And they're like, why are you asking me? But like, I like to see what people. I like to see what people have yeah, overcome. It tells you a lot. You know what I mean, it tells you a lot of what you've overcome. Like some people be having little, little, you know, little minor problems. But I want to see that shows you how vulnerable you are. That shows you know, strength comes from telling your trauma. You know what I mean. So if you're able, if you have if you have the strength to tell it, you know, that's someone I want to see. Just some of the stuff they overcome. You know, I like to see trauma. That's what I like to see. Not that I want to see anyone go through some shit, <laughs> but everybody in this room has went through some shit. Fast. No matter what, everybody you see walking, everybody's been through something. So I just like to see, you know, how can I relate to them? You know, they get they get through some shit I've never even heard of. I can't relate with them too well. You know what I mean? And help build them up. We probably will be a good match. But if there's something I can relate to, like, alright, I can help them. And you know, I went through something similar. I'm telling what I went through, and now we can help each other. You know what I mean? Um, the ability to teach, like wanting to, you could look at someone as you're like, you're not blood related, but you look at them as your brother. You want to help them in any way possible. All the skills you know and they may know, y'all come together to like teach each just other. to get better. Teaching is like, there's so many people that have access to knowledge and won't share it or just hold on to it. When if you just teach one person, they may teach a thousand people. Could you talk to them one time? Something so valuable that they'll just teach everybody. But people, not a lot of people really want to just help and just teach people. Like, just condition them once again. Just just, just teach it. Yeah. Um, how, da, 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 da. If you can witness any event in the past, present, or future, what would it be? Well, past, yeah, present. Well, oh, yeah. Past, past, say that present. again. Hold on. Sorry. If you could witness any <laughs> event, and initially I said past, present, or future. I don't think the present really makes sense, but yeah, any event in the past or the future, what would it be? White supremacy being on. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I would say the future. Um, it could be or too. Okay, so in the so past, in the past, past, past or future, the deal. I would like to, um, I would like to see uh, the Nat Turner rebellion. I would like to see that first and to see just how that was. I guess in the future, like in the mix, or you just watch it. Like, I just want to watch. I, I wish eighteen oh four was better though. I think eighteen oh four. They actually like eighteen oh four. They actually beat the French and got them off. That's true. That's true. Off, but no, 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 no. It's my personal. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> I would like to see that. I would like to see like like you know just go. But I really just. I mean, we are kind of slavery stuff, but I really would just kind of go back and just see how. I feel like if every black person had a chance to go back and see how it really was, because now I feel like it's just so like, all right, y'all went through slavery, it's whatever, but if y'all see how we're still affected, if every black person had to go back and see that, that would change a lot of people. That would change a lot of people. I, I seen this one post that said, you know, um, if you want to make a change, something like that, like if you want, if you want to know what you did in the civil rights movement, you're doing it right now. That's that's real. Like what literally things repeat itself. So I would say go back and you know just experience. I guess experience it. You know, see it for myself. You know what I mean? Uh, future, I don't really know. Like, um, I mean, I'm not gonna you know just say see right. But I guess um, I don't really know. I'm okay. saying, I don't um, really know. For my past, it could just be one young guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm stuck with mine. Both good answers. What is your best childhood memory? Best childhood memory. Um, best childhood memory. You I mean, want to go first or whoever that one. I'm not gonna lie, man. I had a pretty rough childhood, so like it was a lot of it was a lot of rough things in my childhood. But um, I guess I guess uh, the making the sit like the best was making the decision to change my childhood, you know, change myself. Um, you know, I remember like you know people look at me like oh that's so smart whatever, but I've been held back three times, it's, uh, spelled three times, held back twice. I was always a troubled kid growing up, so I feel like. You know, watching myself just change and become a better person, a better man, I feel like that was probably like the best thing. You know, I mean, there's some other experiences, you know what I mean, but that's probably one of the best ones, you know, just watching myself change. I really want to agree with him on that one. Like, you know, we're twins, we've been through the same stuff, like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm for that, all for that. Perspective. Um, what if you had, if you had a pass, what would it be? If you had to pick a life model or a life philosophy you live by? Um, I would say uh, the first thing. I mean, I would. I mean, I guess it's gonna be just my own words, really. Just uh, love yourself first. Uh, you know, try to uh, just really understand your feelings and you know and, and and stuff like that. And just try to love others and try to be nice at all times. You know what I mean, like you know, that's really just love. Like that's the simple way to put it. Just find out how to love. A lot of people don't know how to love. Never experienced love, so just try to experience that. Yeah, I remember like I, that hit me like a few years ago. You know, a lot of people says like, 
the way it comes off sometimes, it's like a cliche or cheesy. Love cares all, love is the answer. But it really is. Like, you really think about just more, a little Everyone more love needs, in the you world. You know what I mean? Whether it's from if, a woman, from your mom, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Cause, and most people who are fucked up, do fucked up things, they didn't experience a, a certain amount of love or that love was tainted or like traumatized. Yeah, man, it's, it's so then you end up just like say you help one person they can help others or you fuck up one person they end up fucking up a whole bunch of other people yeah, whatever she wasn't loved in the mix or whatever in the room just mastering yourself like in your true your fullest potential like seeing yourself so high like that's when I think about it like us right now we're not at our true like our highest state of mind like just just the mindset that we have we have we're we can do so much more create so much more help so much people like just come to your full self like 100 percent cool um if you had uh if you could have dinner with anybody one dead and one alive who would it be one dead and one alive um i guess i guess um First person, I guess, just you know, just because I found out I related to him would be Elijah Muhammad. You know, just have dinner with him and just just learn more about the family, learn more about you know what he had to go through. I know he had to go through some challenges, you know, stuff like that. And then uh, one present, one present. Um, I mean, I, I guess I got, I, I guess I got another person as there. Just uh, maybe. Um, yeah, it could be two dead ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, just uh, me, my, you know, some of my grandparents. I've never met any like. Of my great grandparents, or like I never met my grandfather on either side. You know, just still one of them. But I guess pre- the present though, shh, there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there that I would like to uh, talk to. Uh, you got somebody like that? Like from the dead, I, he said Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad Ali is one of them also, and then alive. Damn. Too <laughs> 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 I like to me like. Young guy, that's cool. Maybe Magic Johnson, honestly, because I'm, I'm a huge Magic Johnson fan. Okay. So maybe that's why. Cool. Um, if you had a billion dollars, yeah. now you have been talking all this progressive, great yeah. things. Now you got, you got to be some niggers. Sound these niggers. <laughs> if you had a billion dollars, what would be the first luxurious thing you buy for yourself? Um, the first luxurious thing I would buy is probably like. I'm on. I, w- I would definitely buy a house and just kind of like, like, put a whole workout system in it. I like the workout system. Like, you know, put a whole workout system in there, get a pool, basketball court, you know, just okay. get a really nice house so I could just actually have house. a home. You know what I mean? Actually have a, a place just to stay. Is it in this area? Hell no. I'll probably, I'll probably, outside outside of state? I want to, I mean, I want to live in Africa for about five to ten years. So okay. maybe, maybe Africa, but I want to live somewhere where it's always warm. I cannot gotcha. stand any more winters. Like, I want to live somewhere where it's always warm. So definitely not Philly. Definitely. If I had a billion dollars, I'm buying a tank. I'm buying a helicopter. I'm literally going on a militant ramp and just everything militant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you wrote a book or made a movie, what would it be called? It'll probably be about your life. Oh, all right, all right, talk everything. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, um, a book or a movie mm-hmm. about yeah. about my life? No. Uh, Whatever you want to make it about. Just what would be the name of it? Mm-hmm. Uh, or it could be about your life. Right? However you want. I mean, I mean, since you know, since we, uh, I'm so, I don't really know. I have, so I have a, I have, a, I have another idea. It's called uh, it's going to be called Black Image Entertainment. So I'm actually going to make a video game, and we're going to actually put some Black history into video games. So. I think you know, so you know, something along that lines where it's like maybe like Moses talk about Harry Tubman, put it in a video game or something like that. So I know that's not like you know, something like that, but it's like video games, stuff like that. So I you know, I'll probably call it you know, something like that. I'll do it. If I had to like with a book, it would be definitely about trauma, like the things that we've experienced and how to like heal from that. Like, yeah. Definitely from our personal experience and from our mom, from our dad, like just yeah. that's just what it is. That's just, um, Sano, have you guys read Charlemagne's book, Shook I haven't read it. I mean, I think I, I could be up that type of From what I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I, shook one. Shook one. Shook yeah, yeah. One. I, 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 um, I seen him sign. I see. I seen him in person. I didn't really get to meet him. I had seen him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I know that book talked to you know, a lot about you know stuff like anxiety, trauma, yeah. and shit like that. Um, da, 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 da. All the money. All the money in the world. All the knowledge. Knowledge. Because that's how you get the. <laughs> Get them tanks, man. <laughs> I'm fucking tanks. I'm, I'm, I really will go with the knowledge. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, you ever seen 16 Blocks? 
All right, cool. Quick summary. So it's a well, it doesn't matter. So basically, imagine yourself you're at a bus stop. There's a big ass nuke that's about to drop on this city, but somehow this car can get you to safety a mile. You have no tank. It's just this car yeah. that can only fit two people in. Nobody can get on the hood, top, drag one. Just two people can get in this car, whatever. Including yourself when you choose to go. At the bus stop, it's you. Um, let's say your brother, uh, the love of your life, and then a random little kid. Who gets in the car? Well, I'm gonna say the love of my life because then we can make a family, <laughs> and then they can keep on going. Oh, also, the, uh, your, your brother, usually just your best friend, who, who make do your brother something. Your brother, let's say recently, saved your life, literally. I still, I'm still. Oh, you got you. Fuck. Yeah, you got you. I don't I, care. Right? We came in the womb. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, still have to go with that because, yeah. I mean, if you want to procreate. Mind you, no, the world isn't ended. This city is with the blow. Just let it make it clear. Oh, the world. I'll take Not the end of civilization. John got to go. I'll find another one. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going. Go. If the world ain't ending, then yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going. You don't got to no, yeah. You don't got to be, be Adam and Eve and shit. All right. What is this chapter of your life called? I mean, Healing and growing. Yeah, right now, I mean, I feel like this is a, it's a healing, it's a healing thing, um, and just like I know, twenty twenty is gonna be like you know a great year. So I renew, like you know, by the time my, my birthday just passed, so I renew by twenty four. Like it's just gonna be like just we went through all of our you know our, our trauma, everything, and like you know we went through all the you know trial. We're gonna go through some more you know stuff, hardship, but I feel like now it's just like now when I start seeing my progress, you know what I mean. So I feel like it's just all it's only up from there. And lastly, we put this in the atmosphere. Once you win your life, a lifetime achievement award of sorts, of all you have done and achieved in your life to that point, whatever, in your career and adventures, mm -hmm. you have to give a speech now. What would a speech be like? Long, short, written, freestyle, by yourself, uh, motivational, kagi, area, remorseful, tears, emotional. What is it going to be like? Freestyle. I mean, maybe, maybe organic, maybe, um, you know, it probably would be just organic, just a regular organic, you know, maybe write some stuff down because I hate public speaking, so I'm not really good at public speaking. Or mm -hmm. Even stuff like this, we would get nervous, you know what I mean? So, I'm, you know, we're comfortable because, you know, questions, but um, it would probably just be whatever comes in my head, you know what I mean? Just just be honest. That's how I'm just, we're just honest people, so just something mm -hmm. like that. Okay, cool. So, with that being said, you guys enjoy yourself? I did, man. It's my first podcast. Um, you know, I definitely enjoy yeah, myself. I'm enjoy comfortable. For sure. So yeah, I'm glad to have you guys. Great conversation. Learned some things. Had some insight. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So plug the business. Plug anything you want to talk about. People can find you. Ever to get something. Yeah. So um, you guys can find us on Instagram. Um, Black and Mobile. Like I said, we're the only black-owned food delivery company. Talk heavy. In Philadelphia, Thanks. we're the only one. Um, you know, there's not, there's, I know there's other, maybe other black owned delivery services. We're going to be the largest one. Um, mm. We're going to be at every city. So y'all can definitely check us out. Um, you know, go to blackandmobile.com. We got a whole new platform coming. We're relaunching August 1st. So if you know any black August 1st, just, hey, the universe is working. That's the yep. third, that's the third anniversary of my podcast. We're <laughs> launching new Yeah, so we're, we're relaunching August 1st. Um, you know, so definitely, if you know, any black owned businesses, um, you know, definitely send them our way. Uh, you know, and definitely support us. You know, because we're, we're we're only promoting love. Like you know, even even if it looks like oh we're segregating or whatever, like it's really not that way. But we all know that you know, a lot of people progress. a lot of people need help. So you know, just uh, you no, know, definitely support our vision. Y'all y'all help you know y'all helping us to uh, you know keep going and we're young entrepreneurs. So definitely support us. Yeah, shout out to them. Um, yeah, so you should support them. Support me though as well. You know, uh, you if you listen this far, you know, subscribe, share, listen to past episodes. Um. Last episode was kind of wild, a little problematic. This one way more, you know, about healing and growth, and, you know, uh, more calm and tame. But the next one we're going to do, I said we're doing three today. That's, that one probably back to being wild shit, whatever. But, yeah, so Ryan, you loud, talk about it. We out. Shout out to you, man. I really appreciate that.